Hi guys, Cornell is back. Today I'm going to read Numbers 24 to 28, Psalm 87, and Proverbs 30. Let's get started. Numbers 24 to 28. Balaam saw that the Lord was pleased to give his blessing to Israel. So he didn't try to use evil magic to, as he had done at other times. Instead, he turned around and looked toward the desert. He looked out and saw Israel. They had set up their camps tribe by tribe. The Spirit of God came on him. Balaam spoke the message he had received from God. He said, Here's the message. Here's the message God gave Balaam, the son of Beal. It's the message God gave to the one he sees clearly. It's the message God gave to the one who hears the words of God. He sees a vision from the mighty one. He falls down flat with his face toward the ground. His eyes have been opened by the Lord. People of Jacob, your tents are very beautiful. Israel, the places where you live are very beautiful. They spread out like valleys. They are like gardens beside a river. They are like a lowe's the Lord has planted. They are like cedar trees beside a stream. Their water buckets will run over. Their seeds will have plenty of water. The king will be greater than King Agag. The kingdom will be honored. God brought them out of Egypt. They are as strong, strong as a wild ox. They destroy nations at war with them. They break their bones in pieces. They wound them with their arrows. Like a male lion, they lie down and sleep. They are like a female lion. Who dares to wake them up? May those who bless them, bless you, be blessed. May those who curse you, be cursed. Then Balak became very angry with Balaam. He slapped his hands together. He said to Balak, I sent for you to put a, a curse on my enemies, but you have given them a blessing three times. Get out of here right away. Go home. I said I'd make you very rich, but the Lord has kept you from getting rich. Balaam answered Balak, Here's what I told the messengers you sent me. I said, Balak could give me all the silver and gold in his palace. Even if I wanted to, I still couldn't do anything at all that goes beyond what the Lord commands. I must say only what the Lord tells me to say. Now I'm going back to my people. But come, let me warn you about what the people will do to your people in days to come. Then Balaam spoke the message he received from God. He said, Here's the message God gave to B God gave Balaam, the son of Beal. It's the message God gave to the one who sees clearly. It's the message God gave to the one who hears the words of God. The Most High God has given him knowledge. He sees a vision from the Mighty One. He falls down flat with his face toward the ground. His eyes have been opened by the Lord. I see him, but I don't see him now. I view him, but he isn't near. A star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of the people of Mel people of Melon. He will crush the heads of all the people of Sheth. He will win the battle over Edom. He will win the battle over his enemy, Seir. The Israel will go strong. A ruler will come from among the people of Jacob. He will destroy those from the city who are still alive. Then Balaam saw the Amalekites. He spoke the message he received from Israel, from God. He said, Amalek was the first nation to attack Israel, but their end will be to destruction. Then Balaam saw the Kenites. He spoke the message he received from God. He said, the place where you live is safe. Your nest is on a high cliff. But you Canaanites will be destroyed. Asher will take you as prisoners. 
Then Balan sent the message he had received from God. He said, Who can live when God does this? Ships will come from the shores of Cyprus. They will bring Asher and Eber under their control. But they themselves will also be destroyed. Then Balak got up and returned home. And Balak went on his way. Chapter 25 Israel was staying in Shittim. The men of Israel began to commit sexual sins with the women of Moab. The women invited the men to feast and sacrifices to honor their gods. The people ate the sacrifices and bowed down in front of the statues of those gods. So Israel joined in and worshipped the god named Baal that was worshipped at Peor. The Lord became very angry with Israel. The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people, kill them, put their dead, put their dead bodies out in the open. I want to see you do it in the middle of the day. Then I will not be angry with Israel. So Moses spoke to Israel judges. He said, Some of your people have joined in in worshipping the god named Baal, that is worshipped at Pure. Each of you must kill the people in your tribe who have done that. Then an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman. He did it right in the front of the whole community of Israel. They were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Finus was a, was a priest. He was the son of Elzer, the son of Aaron. When Finus saw what had happened, he left the people. He, he took a spear in his hand. He followed the man into the tent. Finus stuck the spear through the man and into the woman's stomach. Then the Lord stopped the plague against the Israelites. But the plague had already killed 24,000 of them. The Lord said to Moses, Finus is a priest. He is the son of Elza, the son of Aaron. Finus has turned my anger away from the Israelite. I am committed to making sure I am honored among them. And he is, and he is as committed as I am. So even though I am angry, with them. I did not put an end to it. So tell Finus I am making my covenant. I am making my covenant with him. It is my promise to give him peace. He and his sons after him will, will have a covenant to be priests forever. That is because he was committed to making sure that I, the Lord, his God, was honored. And that way he paid for the sin of the Israelite. The name of the Israelite man who was killed was Zimri. He was the son of Saul. Zimri was killed along with the Midianite woman. Saul was a family leader in the tribe of Simeon. The name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Cosby. She was the daughter of Zer. She was the chief of the Midianite family. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Treat the Midianites just as you just as you treat enemies. Kill them. After all, they treated you like enemies. They tricked you into worshipping the god named Baal that is worshipped at Pure. They also tricked you because of what Cosby did. She was the woman killed when the plague came that was connected with Peel. Cosby was the daughter of the Midianite leader. After the plague, the Lord spoke to Moses and Elza, the priest. Elza was the son of Aaron. The Lord said, Count all the men of Israel. Make a list of them by their families. Count all the men who are able to serve in Israel's army. They must be 20 years old or more. At that time, the Israelites were on the plains of Moab. They were by the Jordan River across from Jericho. Moses and Eleazar the priest spoke with them. They said, 
How are all the men 20 years old or more? The way justice the Lord commanded Moses. Here are the men of Israel who came out of Egypt. Reuben was Israel's oldest son. Here are the names of his son. The Hanukite family came from Hanukkah. The Polarite king family came from Paul. The Hezronite family came from Hezron. The Carmite family came from Carmel. These were the families of Reuben. The number of men were was 43,730. Eliab was the son of Paul. Eliab's sons were Nemuel, Dathan, and Abiram. Dathan and Abiram were the same community officials who refused to obey Moses and Aaron. They were among the followers of the Korah, of Korah who refused to obey the law. The ground opened its mouth. It swallowed them up along with Korah. The followers of Korah died when the fire burned up. 250 men. Their deaths were a warning to the rest of Israel, but the family line of Korah didn't die out completely. Here are the names of Simeon's sons. They are listed by their families. The Nemuelite family came from Nemuel. The Geminite family came from Gemin. The Jackite, the Jackinite family came from Jackin. The Zerahite family came from Zerah. The Shulite family came from Shul. These were the families of Simeon. The number of men counted was 22,200. Here are the names of God's sons. They are listed by their families. The Zephani family came from Zephan. The Haggai family came from Haggai. The Shunite family came from Shuni. The Osnite family came from Osni. The Arite family came from Eri. The Aradite family came from Arodi. The Aralite family came from Arali. These were the families of Gad. The number of the men counted was 40,500. Er and Onan were sons of Judah, but they died in Canaan. Here are the names of Judah's sons. They are listed by their families. The Shelonite family came from Shel. The Parasite family came from Paris. The Zerahite family came from Zerah. Here are the names of the sons of Paris. The Hezronite family came from Hezron. The Hamulite family came from Hamul. These were the families of Judah. The number of men, the men counted was 76,500. Here are the names of Isaac's sons. They are listed by their families. The Tolite family came from Tola. The Puite family came from Pua. The Jeshubite family came from Jeshon. The Shimonite family came from Shimon. These were the families of Isaac. The number of the men counted was 64,300. Here are the names of Zebulun's sons. They are listed by their families. The Seradite family came from Sarah. The Elamite family came from Elam. The Jah, Jah, the Jahlilite family came from Jahlil. These were the families of Zebulun. The number of men counted was 60,500. Here are the names of Joseph's sons. They are listed by their family. The families came from Manasseh and Ephraim, the sons of Joseph. Here are the names of Manasseh's sons. The Makarite family came from Machiel. Machia was the father of Gilead. The Gileadite family came from Gilead. Here are the names of Gilead's sons. The, Isa, the Ezerite family came from Ezer. The Halakite family came from Halak. The Azrielite family came from Azriel. The Shechemite family came from Shechem. The, the Shechemite Shemidite family came from Shemida. The Hepharite family came from Hepher. Zelophehad was the son of Hepher. Zelophehad didn't have any sons. All he had was daughters. Their names were Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terzah. These were the families of Manasseh. The number of the men counted was 52,700. 
Here are the names of Ephraim's sons. They are listed by their families. The Shutha Light family came from Shuthala. The Barakite family came from Becca. The Tahanite family came from Tahan. The sons of Shuthala were the Aranite family. They came from Aran. These were the families of Ephraim. The number of the men counted was 32,500. These were the sons of Joseph. They are listed by their families. Here are the names of Benjamin's sons. They are listed by their families. The Bella Light family came from Bella. The Ashbelite family came from Ashbel. The Ahiramite family came from Ahira. The Shephamite family came from Shephem. The Huffamite family came from Huffam. Bella's sons came from Ard and Naaman. The Ardite family came from Ard. The name the name the Namite family came from Naaman. These were the families of Benjamin. The number of the men counted was forty-five thousand six hundred. Here's the name of Dan's son. He is listed by the, by his family. The Shehemite family came from Sheh came from Shehem. This was in the family of Dan. All the men in Dan's family were Shehemites. The number of men counted was 64,400. Here are the names of Asher's sons. They are listed by their families. The Imanite family came from Imna. The Ishvite family came from Ishvi. The Baalite family came from Baria. These are the names. Here are the names of the families that came from Barisa. The Heberite family came from Heber. The Malkielite family came from Malkiel. Asher also had a daughter named Sarah. These were the families of Asher. The number of the men counted was 53,400. These are the names of Naphtali's sons. They are listed by their families. The Jazielite family came from Jaziel. The Gunite family came from Gunny. The Jezreelite family came from Jezreel. The Shilamite family came from Shilam. These were the families of Naphtali. The number of the men counted was 45,400. The total number of the men of Israel was 601,730. The Lord said to Moses, I will give the land to them. The amount of land each family receives will be based on the number of its men. Give a larger share to a larger family. Give a smaller share to a smaller family. Each family will receive its share based on the number of men listed in it. Be sure that you cast lots when you give out the land. What each family receives will be based on the number of men listed in its tribe. Cast lots when you give out each share. Cast lots for the larger and smaller families alike. Here are the names of the Levites. They are listed by their families. The Gershonite family came from Gershon. The Kohathite family came from Kohath. The Merarite family came from Merari. Here are the names of the other Levite families. They are the Libnite family, the Hebronite family, the Malite family, the Mushite family, the Korahite family. Amram came from the Korahite family. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed. She is from the family line of Levi. She was born to the Levites in Egypt. Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam were born in the family line of Amram and Jochebed. Aaron was the father of Nadab and Abihu. He was also the father of Elsa and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu made an offering to the Lord by using fire that wasn't allowed. So they died. The number of male Levites among the old or more was 23,000. They weren't listed along with the other men of Israel. That's because they didn't receive a share among them. These are the men counted by Moses and Elzer the priest. At that time, the Israelites were on the plains of Moab. They were by the Jordan River across from Jericho. The men of Israel had been counted before in the Sinai Desert.
by Moses and Aaron the priest. But not one of them was among the men counted this time. So the Lord had told the Israelites at Kadesh Barnea that they would certainly die in the desert. Not one of them was left alive except Caleb and Joshua. Caleb was the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua was the son of Nun. Chapter 27 The daughters of Zelophehad belonged to the family groups of Manasseh. Zelophehad was the son of Hepher. Hepher was the son of Gilead. Gilead was the son of Machia. Machia was the son of Manasseh. And Manasseh was the son of Joseph. The names of Zelophehad's daughters were Mela, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. They approached the entrance to the tent of meeting. There they stood in front of Moses and Elder of the priest. The leaders in the whole community were there too. So Lofahad's daughter said, Our father died in the Sinai desert, but he wasn't one of the men who followed Korah. He wasn't one of those who joined together against the Lord. Our father died because of his own sin. He didn't leave any sons. Why should our father's name disappear from his family just because he didn't have a son? Give us property among our father's realtors. So Moses brought their case to the Lord. The Lord said to him, What Zelophehad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them property. Give them a share among their father's realtors. Give, them the, give their father's property to them. Say to the Israelites, Suppose a man dies who doesn't have a son. Then give his property to his daughter. Suppose the man doesn't have a daughter, then give his property to his brothers. Suppose the suppose the man doesn't have a daughter, then give his property to his brothers. Suppose the man doesn't have any brothers, then give his property to his father's brothers. Suppose his father doesn't have any brothers, then give his property to the nearest male relative in his family group. It will belong to him. This is what the law will require of the Israelites. It is what the law is just as the Lord commanded me. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go up this mountain in the Abarim range. See the land I have given the Israelites? After you have seen it, you too will join the members of your family who have already died. You You will die. Just as your brother Aaron did. The community refused to obey me at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of sin. At the time, you and Aaron did not obey my command. You did not honor me in front of them as the holy God. Moses spoke to the Lord. He said, Lord, you are the God who gives life and breath to all living things. Please put someone in charge of this community. Have that person lead them and take care of them. Then your people won't be like sheep without a shepherd. So the Lord said to Moses, Joshua, the son of Nun, has the ability to be a wise leader. Get him and place your hand on him. Have him stand in front of Elzer, the priest, and the whole community. Put him in charge while someone is washing. watching. Give him some of your authority. Then the whole community of Israel will obey him. Joshua will stand in front of Elzer the priest. Elzer will help him make decisions. Elzer will get help from me by using the urine. Joshua and the whole community of Israel must not make any move at all unless I command them to. Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. He got Joshua and had him stand in front of Elzer the priest and the whole community. Then Moses placed his hands on Joshua. And he put him in charge of the people. He did he did just as the Lord had commanded. He did just as the Lord had directed through Moses. Chapter twenty eight. The Lord said to Moses, Here's a command I want you to give the Israelites. Tell them, make sure to present to me my food offerings. Do it at the appointed time. The smell will please me. Tell them. Here's the food offering you must present to the Lord. Present to him two lambs a year old. They must not have any flaws. 
present them as a video and off them. So each day, off at 1 a.m. in the morning, off at the other when the sun goes down, present a grain offering along with them. It must have eight cups of the finest flour. Mix it with a quart of oil, oil made from pressed olives. It is the regular burnt offering. The Lord established it at Mount Sinai. It has a pleasant smell. It is a food offering presented to the Lord. Along with that, offer a quart of wine as a drink offering. It must be given along with each lamb. Pour out the drink offering to the Lord at the sacred tent. Offer the second layer when the sun goes down. Sacrifice it along with the same kind of grain offering and drink offering that you present in the morning. It is the food. It is a food offering. Its smell pleases the Lord. On the Sabbath day, make an offering of two lambs. They must be a year old. They must not have any flaws. Sacrifice them along with their drink offering. Sacrifice them along with a grain offering of 16 cups of the finest flour. And mix it with olive oil. It is the burnt offering for every Sabbath day. It is in addition to the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. On the first day of every month, bring to the Lord a burnt offering. Bring two young bulls and one ram. Also bring seven male lambs a year old. They must not have any flaws. Present a grain offering along with each bull. They must have 24 cups of the finest flour. Mix it with olive oil. Present a grain offering along with the ram. It must have 16 cups of the finest flour. Mix it with oil. Present a grain offering along with each lamb. It must have eight cups of the finest flour. Mix it with oil. It is for a burnt offering. It has a pleasant smell. It is a food offering presented to the Lord. Present a drink offering along with each bowl. It must have two quarts of wine. Offer two and a half pints along with the ram. And offer one quart along with each lamb. It is the burnt offering for each month. It must be made on the day of each new moon feast during the year. One male goat must be sacrificed to the Lord as a sin offering. It is in addition to the regular burnt offering and drink offering. The Lord's Passover feast must be held on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of the month, there must be a feast. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, come together for a special service. Do not do any regular work. Present to the Lord a food offering. Present a burnt offering of two young bulls and one ram. This represents seven male lambs, a year old. They must not have any flaws. Present a grain offering along with each bull. The offering must have 24 cups of the finest flour. Mix it with olive oil. I offer 16 cups along with the ram. Offer 8 cups along with each of the lamb, with each of the 7 lambs. Include a male goat for us as a sin offering. They'll pay for your sin. Offer everything in addition to the regular morning burnt offering. Present the food offering every day for 7 days. The smell of the offering will please the Lord. You must present the offering in addition to the regular burnt offering and the drink offering. On the seventh day, come together for a special service. Do not do any regular work. On the day you gather the first share of your crops, present to the Lord an offering of your first grain. Do it during the Feast of Weeks. Come together for a special service. Do not do any regular work. Sacrifice a burnt offering of two young bulls and one ram. Also sacrifice seven male lambs a year old. The smell of the offering will please the Lord. Present a grain offering along with each bull. It must have 24 cups of the finest flour. Mix it with olive oil. 
Offer 16 cups along with the land. Offer 8 cups along with each of the 7 lands. Include a meal bird to pay for all your sin. Present everything along with your drink with the drink offering. Do it in addition to the regular burnt offering and its grain offering. Be sure the animal do not have be sure the animals do not have any flaws. Proverbs thirty. words of Arga, son of Jacob. These sayings came from God. This man said to Ithiel, I am weary, God, but I can still have success. Surely I am only a dumb animal and not a man. I don't understand this element I haven't learned wisdom, and I don't know the things the Holy One knows. Who has gone up to heaven and come down? Whose hands have gathered up the wind? Who has wrapped up the waters in a coat? Who has set in place all the boundaries of the earth? What is his name? What is his son's name? Surely you know. Every word of God is perfect. He is like a shield to those who trust in him. He keeps them safe. Don't add to his words. If you do, he'll correct you. He'll prove that you are a liar. Lord, I ask you for two things. Don't refuse me before I die. Keep lies far away from me. Don't make me either poor or rich. But give me only the bread I need each day. If you don't, I might have too much. Then I might say, I don't know you. I might say, who is the Lord? Or I might become poor and steal. Then I will bring shame to the name of my God. Don't tell lies about a servant when you talk to their master. If you do, they'll curse you, and you'll pay for the, your lies. Some people curse their fathers. Others don't bless their mothers. Some are pure and they're very nice but their dirty sins haven't been washed away. Some have eyes that are very proud. They look down on others. Some people have teeth like swords. The teeth in their jaws are as sharp as knives. They are ready to eat up the poor people of the earth. They are ready to eat up those who are the most needy. A leech is two daughters. They cry out, give, give. Three things are never satisfied. Four things never say enough. The first is a grave. The second is a woman who can't have a baby. The third is land, which never gets enough water. And the fourth is fire, which never says enough. One person makes fun of their father. Another doesn't honor their mother when she is old. The ravens of the valley will peck out their eyes. Then the vultures will eat them. Three things are too amazing for them. They are four things I don't understand. The first is the way of an eagle in the sky. The second is the way of a snake on a rock. The third is the way of a ship on the ocean. And the fourth is the way of a man with a young woman. This is the way of a woman who commits adultery. She eats and wipes her mouth. Then she says, I haven't done anything wrong. And the three things the earth shakes. And the four things that can't stand up. The first is a servant who becomes a king. The second is a foolish and ungodly person who gets plenty to eat. The third is a mean woman who gets married. And the fourth is a servant who takes the place of the woman she works for. All things on earth are small, but they are very wise. The first are ants, which aren't very strong, but they store up their food in the sun. The second are hyraxes, which aren't very powerful, but they make their home among the rocks. The third are locusts, which don't have a king, but they all much broader in ranks. And the fourth are, and the fourth are lizards, which your hand can catch, but you'll find them in king's palaces. Three things walk as if they are kings. All things move as kings do. The first is the lion, which is mighty among the animals. It doesn't back away from anything. The second is the rooster, which walks proudly. The third is a builder, and the fourth is a king, who is secure against any who might oppose him. Do you do foolish things? Do you think you are better than others? Do you plan evil? If you do, put your hand over your mouth and stop talking. If you turn green, you will produce butter. If you twist a nose, you will produce blood. And if you stir up anger, you will produce a fire. Psalm 88 Wait, hang on. Psalm 87. The Lord has built a city on the holy mountain. He loves this, 
He loved the city of Zion more than all the other places where the people of Jacob live. City of God, the Lord says glorious things about you. He says, I will include Egypt and Babylon in the list of nations who recognize me as king. I will also include Philistine and Tyre, along with Cush. I will say about them, they were born in Zion. Certainly it will be said about Zion, this nation and that nation were born in it. The Most High God himself will make it secure. Here is what the Lord will write in his list of the nations. Each of them was born in Zion. As they, made, as they make music, they will sing, Zion, all our blessings come from you. Now let's stand, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you have also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.